Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm the owner and surgeon for Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm going to talk about cranial cruciate ligament tears in dogs and cats, and then uh, after which I'll talk about surgical repair. Uh, I want to start out by thanking Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to use their um, illustrations. This is a wonderful app on the iPad uh, called uh, DIA. Uh, what we're looking at here is a tear of what we call the cranial cruciate ligament in dogs and cats. In people it's the ACL, it's the same structure in uh, dogs and cats with a slightly different name. The structure on the right is normal and on the left it's torn. The way we uh, make the diagnosis of a cruciate ligament tear is with a particular manipulation called cranial drawer. And I'm going to show that here the two bones above and below the knee joint, the femur and the tibia, and if I put my hands above and below and I can elicit this type of manipulation called the drawer sign, it is really conclusive for a cruciate ligament tear, and so it's, in a complete tear it can be a very easy diagnosis to make. In a partial tear it can be a little bit uh, more challenging in some uh, situations. Now, as far as the big question is, why did this happen? Usually there's some event running in the yard, playing with another dog. Uh, however, in dogs, uh, it's typically a slow degenerative condition. It's falling apart for, right now, unknown reasons. Uh, there may have been some event, but it tends to be fairly minor in nature. And if it wasn't that event, it could have been something the next day or the next week. This is different than it is in people. Uh, in people, it's uh, a normal ligament that's torn with a skiing accident, car accident, some sudden trauma. In cats, we also tend to see this sudden traumatic form rather than the slow degenerative cause in dogs. It doesn't really matter why it tears. The repair is still the same, but it's important to realize this condition in dogs because many of these dogs will end up tearing the other knee. Statistically, there's about a 40% chance that the other knee will have the same problem, and very commonly it occurs within a year. Sometimes they're torn at about the same time, and sometimes we will repair both at the same time. Uh, the typical uh, signalment or uh, presentation on a dog is um, a small, medium, or large breed, basically any dog. Uh, the ages that we see are typically three to eight years of age, although we certainly see dogs as young as a year of age or even a little bit younger, and we see some older dogs, 10, 12, even 14 years of age. There's another structure in the knee called the medial meniscus. Uh, there are actually several structures, but that's the most noteworthy because we very commonly will see that tear. As that drawer manipulation occurs, uh, it will commonly cause a tear in the back part of the meniscus. It's really impossible to identify in most situations on a physical exam, uh, although sometimes we will uh, appreciate a popping sensation which could be characteristic of that. It's something though that we do need to identify at the time of surgery because if it's torn we need to remove the torn portion. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a surgical repair technique uh, that has several names. We call it the extracapsular repair. It's also known as the modified flow technique, um, old-fashioned technique. It's been around for about 40 years, and uh, it's still used quite a bit these days. It's a technique that we use primarily in the smaller breed dogs and cats, um, but we will use it occasionally in the larger breeds, especially for financial concerns. It is a bit less expensive than some of the other techniques. Uh, so let me uh, go through the procedure and uh, talk a bit more about the aftercare and complications. So this is looking at the joint from the front. Over here we see a tear of the cruciate ligament. And over here, this is the medial meniscus. So any torn parts we take out, we have a view of the entire joint during this surgical procedure. Now the next step is to put in essentially an artificial ligament. There's various structures. Most people, including myself, use uh, synthetic nylon to act as the new ligament. It is looped behind a little bone there called a fibella crosses diagonally through a hole that we drill in the tibia and then we pull the suture back and secure it using a metallic crimp in most cases.
So immediately after surgery, that drawer sign that I demonstrated is gone. The, the knee feels like a normal knee again. Uh, that is actually not even meant to be, the nylon is not meant to be the final holding strength though. Rather, the surgery puts the two pieces of bone together, holds in that position long enough so that the body's scar tissue reaction will do uh, the, the rest of the work. It will provide the ultimate holding strength. Um, in theory, two months out from surgery, we could take out that nylon if it was causing a problem. That's pretty rare, but if we did take it out, we would most likely not have to replace anything. Uh, as far as potential complications, fairly low. Um, minor complications that we can see are things like bruising, swelling, redness. Uh, those typically go away within a few days. Uh, as far as more dramatic complications, we could see a break of a part of the implant. I'd say that's a less than a 1% chance of that. And usually there's some trauma involved, a dog falling down the stairs, getting out chasing a squirrel, something that is more than uh, should be allowed during the, uh, the recovery period. Infection is a potential concern. And long term, a potential concern would be a, a tear of that meniscus, the structure that I showed you is very commonly torn at the time of injury, but if it's not, uh, then it can be torn at some point in the future. Now, as far as aftercare, we're looking at a two-month period of restricted activity. No running, jumping, playing, no doing stairs, no jumping on furniture. The concern is more critical early on. First two weeks, it's outside really just for bathroom breaks with no real walks for exercise. Uh, at the time of suture removal in two weeks, if all looks good, we'll start doing some slow leash walks, about five minutes at a time. At a month out, we can increase it by a few minutes. Six weeks out, we increase it a little bit more. That gets us to about eight weeks out. By that point, most dogs are using the leg reasonably well. Uh, a smaller breed uh, is more likely to be pretty close to normal, while the larger dogs are probably still limping a fair bit. But even so, at that point, we will start rapidly adding more activity, and so that the goal is by three months out, we're back to completely normal activity. Um, so it is a very good technique, as I say, especially for the smaller dogs, but for the larger dogs, typically we consider it a second choice.